Hey everyone! Today I'm coming with a tutorial on how to print your artwork so you can sell it on your Etsy store or give it to your patrons at the end of the month. Keep watching! Hi everyone, my name is Marta aka Obscure Beauty and instead of coming with one of my normal vlogs I'm coming today with a tutorial. So I said it on my YouTube video last week that I wanted to do this tutorial about printing, especially on my printer which is an Epson ET7750 because of a recent problem that I started having after updating my MacBook. The printer is meant to be able to do A3, A4 and everything else in between borderless and initially it was doing it seamlessly and then very randomly it stopped being able to do borderless uh, properly in the sense that it was eating too much of the image no matter what I did. So if you have this printer, which I still do advise because it's actually quite a nice printer, it is an echo tank printer and you have to pour the ink with the bottles. It's very economic but the print quality is still quite good. But if you're using this printer and if you've got any issues I do advise you to download a program called Epson Print Layout. So when you do this, you'll be able to go straight from your Photoshop, you click on File and then Automate and you'll find their Epson Print Layout. You'll click on it, it will open the Epson Print Layout app and it will print from there seamlessly. The only thing is that you'll have to save the picture on RGB. And this is quite a thing that I've seen discussed uh, between having to save the picture on C, Y and K versus RGB. For home printers, I don't really see that much of a difference between printing on each of the other. But if you're obviously asking for someone else to print it for you from a professional printer, you will probably have to save your painting on a CYMK format. But for the Epson specifically, and especially if you use this layout program, you will have to save your picture in RGB, which for me is fine because that's how I paint anyway. So I've kind of went ahead of myself a little bit, but let's go from the beginning. What are you going to need to print? You need your artwork and as you know I do all my artwork on Procreate. Most of the times I do it just on Procreate but lately because of a new style I'm developing I'm, I'm also finishing it off on Photoshop but I've tried printing it straight from my iPad and it doesn't work properly so I always send it somewhere where I can print it from my back book and that way it works. I usually print directly from Photoshop but you can print also from whichever app you have on your computer that well prints. Next thing you have to have is a printer and like I said I use the Epson ET7750. It is a good printer. There's plenty of printers out there and I'm not a techie person so I will not advise you to buy this or that because this is the only printer I've ever used and I have no idea about what printer is the best. I advise you to do your own research and just buy something you'll have trust on. Next thing you'll have to have is paper and there are plenty of variety of paper you can use for your prints out there. The one I currently use is Epson Archival Matte paper. And the reason for me to use this is that I do not like glossy prints. I think that the shine is too close to a photograph and it just doesn't look well with my art. I've never tried the semi-gloss but I don't have a particular interest from it. I really like how a matte print looks and I can show you a few samples of this if you just give me a moment. So this is a matte print and as you can see there is no shine whatsoever to it. This is a glossy print and you can see just how shiny it can be. It's just not my style at all. This paper might seem quite expensive at first but you'll have to think that you're not going to be printing just A4 prints. Most of my clients will prefer A5 which is half of that page which means each page will give you at least two prints but you can also do it even further and print A6 prints out of it and it will save you so much money. A bit like a printer, I do advise you to have a look outside to see what else can you use. There are other archival papers, for example, and even from the Epson brand, you can find the Epson heavyweight matte paper, which is meant to be good. I'll put on the description below some of the measurements and some of the things you'll have to have in account when buying the paper, because honestly, my head is just not good enough for this. So I'll just put the techie stuff down and just make sure you read it before. If by any chance you're doing traditional art, obviously you'll need some sort of scanner 
or if you're doing big art, a good camera to say the least to take a good picture and obviously some sort of lights that you'll have around to make the studio to make sure the picture comes out flawlessly and without any shadows. So that said, I think it's more than enough for us to start going and I'll explain you step by step what I do to actually print my artwork. Okay, so I'm set up on the computer and I'm gonna show you what I have. Currently, I have all my files already set up to print and as you can see, I can just toggle up and down and I'll have different prints available. This is something I like to do because it just saves me time. I do all my prints on demand and it means that if you ask me this print or that print, I'll just be able to click that and click that and I can print it straight away. The settings that I've used for this file is very, very simple. In this case, you go on Photoshop, you press A4, it's RGB, 300 DPI and that's it. <laughs> Nothing else you need to choose. And then you just have to find where the middle is and I have this black box over here that divides it and I just clip the image to it then I just merge it together and that's it I know that that picture is half of the page so what I'm gonna print is this setup right here and these are the colors that I like what I do is I go to file like I said I go to automate and then there's Epson print layout and it takes ages <laughs> but this is a file that I have I print it on semi-gloss even though I'm using matte paper and this is just something that I've seen it somewhere and I thought that was brilliant the colors are so much better if I print it as a semi-gloss than if I print it as a matte paper just don't do it on regular paper it will look rubbish the size will be A4 from the rear paper borderless and this is because I'm gonna use the bottom part of the printer and that's just because it's a, a thick paper and it will roll better if it's going from the back. Quality high, standard portrait and I usually set up here that the printer manages color and it's Adobe RGB and here you can see the colors look very very bright but actually it isn't that bright and usually I proof these colors on the MacBook because the screen is a lot better than this uh, but I know that this will work so I'm not bothered. And now let's go to the printer because we need to turn it on and it will take some time. So this printer is very simple, you just turn it on, it takes a while. Push this down, push this out. And I'll be putting my paper here. And that's it. That should be it. And now I just need to clay print. Oh, I was gonna forget. Even if it's on this program, you actually have to make it borderless to print borderless. It's a bit weird, but that should be it. And it says borderless. I double check everything because I've done way too many mistakes, but that's the settings. Let's print. Woo, the excitement. <laughs> You can see on the back of the printer, I'm just gonna try and... That's what I use to cut the paper after I print. Because I'm a weirdo, I usually do this on the floor because this is where I have the biggest space to cut. This is where I usually trim all my paper. I prefer this sort of guillotine um, cutters than the normal rotary cutter because they're a lot stronger and they can go through very thick paper. So this is what I'm gonna do now with this print. I'm gonna separate them, make sure that there's no white border. That should be it. I'm back on my chair and I'm glad you spent this time with me. I hope you enjoyed. It was a really short kind of normal tutorial but it's something that I was looking for when I started my Etsy business so I'm just doing it in case there's someone else trying to find how to print the best prints to sell as a professional in a sense and what they can do about it. This is the final result. As you can see it's very crisp and beautiful. I really, really enjoy how this printer handles the colors. I'm pretty sure that as long as you get a good printer, you'll get good results. Just make sure the paper has the quality that it needs to hold the paint, the ink properly. Something else that I didn't mention before, there is a difference between inkjet printers and laser printers. And usually for artwork, the recommended printer is an inkjet printer and not a laser printer. If by any chance you have a laser printer, you'll have to have special paper because most of the paper is not compatible with laser inks. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial 
if you did don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel I do mostly vlogs but sometimes I will put one tutorial like this to help you out on your journey as an artist if you want any art tutorials you can find them on my social media you can find the links pretty much spread everywhere on the description below obviously I'll have more art tutorials on my patreon which is also on the description below if you like this video I'm sure you'll like the video that I'm gonna be putting up here which is about how I pack the orders and send the orders to my clients when they order from Etsy that's it for this week and I'll see you next week bye